Welcome. What I want to do is show you how to find the zeros of a function. So when finding the zeros of a function, um, what we want to do is really understand what are zeros and why are we try and find them. Well, there's a couple explanations. There's a lot of different definitions for zeros. Um, but the main important thing, if you can think about, remember a function, we have our input and our output, right? Well, the zeros of our function is when our output is equal to zero. So what we say is f of x, which is our output, equals zero. So any x value that I input where it gives me an output of zero is what we call a zero. And you know the zeros um, are very helpful for us because you know those are actually the x-intercepts um, of a graph of any kind of polynomial that you're working with. And we also call them sometimes you know your roots of your function as well. So let's look at something very basic and I'll kind of show you um, how we're going to find our zero. So the first one is let's say I gave you a function f of x equals x plus 1 and I say find the zeros of that function. Well what that means is I want you to find what are the x values that I have to plug into this function to get my output equal to zero. Now for this problem we can probably do it in our head but it might be helpful for us to write it out as an expression or an equation. So zero f of x equals 0, 0 equals x plus 1. Now to find the value of x that's going to make that equal to 1 or to 0, I just subtract my 1 on both sides and I get negative 1 equals x. So what that means is whenever I plug in a negative 1 in for my x, my output is equal to 0, which we know is true, negative 1 plus 1 equals 0. Now this gets a little complicated now because what we're going to be doing is we're not just going to be dealing with linear functions. We're going to start dealing with quadratic functions and functions to the third and fourth degree. So it's going to get a little crazy and we're going to talk about rational functions. Um, but if we can just keep the same idea in mind, when we're trying to find the zeros, we need to set it equal to zero, set you know, your output equal to zero, and then find the, values of, find the values of x. So let's look at question number one. It says f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. So if I plug in a 0 for my f of x, I have 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. Now, a big problem that a lot of students want to do is they just want to solve for x. They want to put the 5 over there, put the 4 over there, square root it, all this kind of stuff. Well, one thing we need to know, ladies and gentlemen, is when we have a quadratic, um, it's very difficult when we have two different x's, we have an x squared and an x, that we can just solve for the x. We're, we're not going to be able to do it. For to solve this, what we're going to do is we're going to have to factor it. So we're going to have to look at our factoring. And so to factor this, whenever we have our a is equal to 1, what I can do is set up a, you know, a diamond method per se. And what I can say is I take my last number, negative 5, which is my constant, and I take my middle number, which is 4. And I say, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 5, but add to give me negative 4? And I could say, well, negative 1 and 5. Negative 1 times 5 gives me negative 5, but negative 1 plus 5 is going to give me 4. So what I can do now is I can write this as we're going to call two factors. x minus 1 times x plus 5. And if we were to fact FOIL this out, by multiplying by using your, your FOIL method, you would get exactly this quadratic again. Well, one thing we notice is whenever one factor times another factor equals zero, one of them, what we say, is going to equal zero. Just like if I say a times b equals zero, one of these has to equal zero. So what I do is I set both of these equal to zero. I say x minus one equals zero, and x plus five equals zero. Now, solving for x, I get x equals 1 and x equals negative 5. Therefore, now the zeros for this equation are positive 1 and negative 5. Now, let's move on to number 2. Uh, number 2 looks like it's a little bit more difficult problem because now I have an a, my number in front of my x squared, is not 1. So it's going to be a little bit difficult. I can still use the diamond problem. But now when I use a diamond problem, I need to multiply my 3 times my 1. So 3 times 1 is going to give me 63, and then I have a negative 16. So what two numbers multiply to give me 63, but add to give me a negative 16? Well, our two numbers are going to be a negative 9 and a negative 7. Now, to write this as 
my factors, remember I need to plug 0 in for f of x, so I'm going to say 0 equals, and instead of writing the factors, I don't know what the factors are. A lot of students want to say, oh, it's x minus 9 and x minus, x minus 9 times x minus 7. Well, if you multiply that out, that does not equal this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to rewrite my two factors in place of my negative 16. So I'm going to say 3x squared minus 9x minus 7x plus 21. Now I can do this because what you guys can see is all I did is I rewrote these two numbers to add up to negative 16. So I really, these two add up to negative 16, so I really didn't change it. I just kind of rewrote it. Well, then what I can do is I can factor by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two, first two terms and group the last two terms. Now, I can factor out my common term, so I have 0 equals, I can factor out a 3x, I'll be left with an x minus 3, and here I can factor out a negative 7, and I'll be left with x minus 3. Then, I can factor out a negative 3, or x minus 3, so 0 equals x minus 3 times 3x minus 7. Now, doing like I did in my first problem, I'm going to solve each one of these, and I'll have 0 equals x minus 3, and 0 equals 3x minus 7. Now I simply solve, add 3 both sides, x equals 3, and when I add 7, and then divide by 3, my 0 for this one is x equals 7 thirds. Um, so that's how that's a quick little review on factoring. You're really gonna have to make sure when you're finding the zeros that you're really good at your factoring. Number uh, three, this is what we call a rational function. And this one gets students all the time because they hate fractions. We hate fractions. Well, if we can remember, first thing, who cares about the fraction? Let's just do what we know how to do, which is put a zero for f of x. Now, I'm going to go back to a simple problem here. And let's say I had 0 equals x over 7. Or, I don't know, let's put it, this as 2. If I want to solve for x, right, I need to get rid of the 7. What do I have to do? Actually, no, let's just put a 0 there. We'll help there. What do I have to do to get rid of that 7? Well, I need to multiply by the 7. And therefore, what you end up getting is x equals 0. Well, this problem is no different. I have 11 minus x on the bottom of my fraction. So to get rid of that, I need to multiply by 11 minus 7. And what you'll notice is, actually, these problems are really, really cool because, guess what? What is any number times 0? Zero? 0. So I end up getting 0 equals 8x plus 3. And now, it's very easy. This is just a, you know, now it's linear. I can just solve. Subtract 3 on both sides. Negative 3 equals 8x. Divide by 8. x equals a negative 3 eighths. All right? Whew. One more to go. And this one's my favorite one because nobody likes factoring by grouping. Um, factoring by grouping is actually what we did here, but it usually trips up a lot of students because they say, oh, four terms. Crap. Um, let me see if I can factor or... You know, I can't factor everything, the same thing out. Remember, when you want to do factoring by grouping, the best way to do factor by grouping is just to group your first two terms and group your last two terms. So on my first two terms, what can I factor out? Well, I can factor out an x squared. When I factor out an x squared, I'm left with x minus 1. Then, out of these last two terms, that's a negative 25, I can factor out a negative 25. When I factor out a negative 25, I'm left with an x minus 1. And I'm sorry, I'm getting a little lazy. Remember, that equals 0, right? Because f of x equals 0. So now what I need to do is set the factor out an x minus 1. So I say 0 equals x minus 1 times x squared minus 25. Okay? Now I set these both equal to 0. 0 equals x minus 1. And 0 equals x squared minus 25. 25. So when I add 1, I get x equals 1. And then here, just to kind of simplify, I'm going to add 25. And then I'm going to have to take the root. So I have x squared equals 25 
Remember, when you take the square root, remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you're going to get the positive and the negative of your root. So therefore, my zeros are going to be x equals 1, x equals 5, and negative 5. Because 5 times 5 is 25, and negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. All right, guys, that's a lot of work I just put there on the board. So I'm going to leave that up there. I'm going to erase it here for a second. I'm going to put three problems up there that I want you to do, and then I'll show you the answers. Okay, what I'd like you guys to do is write down these four problems, give them a shot, spend about 5-10 minutes on them, and then I'll come back and show you the answers. Alright, you guys ready for this? Let's do it. Um, first thing guys I'd like to do for all these problems before you even start factoring, remember zeros is when f of x equals zero. So the first thing let's do is let's set f of x equal to zero. Okay, now let's go back to the first problem. So the first problem is a rational expression or a rational function. Remember, when it's rational, we need to get our, our 5 off the bottom. So to do that, I'm going to multiply by 5 on both sides. That still gives me 0. So I have 0 equals 12 minus x squared. Well, what I can do is add the x squared to the other side. So I have x squared equals 12. Now remember, I'm going to have to take the root of both sides, so x is going to equal plus or minus radical 12. Now I can simplify radical 12 into 2 radical 3. But remember, just whenever you take the square root of both sides, it's going to be plus or minus. Um, for here, I have an x squared minus 8x plus 15. So therefore, I'm going to have to look into some kind of factoring. All right? I just can't add these over and solve for x. I have to factor this. So I look at what two numbers multiply to give me 15, but add to give me negative 8. Well, I say 0 equals x minus 3 and x minus 5. Because negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. Negative 3 plus negative 5 is equal to negative 8. So therefore, now, since both of these multiply by each other equals 0, I can set them both equal to 0. Now, solving for x, I get x equals 3 and x equals 5 are my two zeros. Um, this one is a little bit more difficult. Well, because here, you know, what do I do? I add the x over to the other side, root it by 3. I mean, what am I doing here? Well, remember, always try to see what you can take out of each function. So I can factor out an x. 0 equals x times x squared minus 1. So now here I have now a, uh, a term multiplied by another term. So therefore, or not a term, but a, uh, a monomial multiplied by a binomial. So then what happens is, again, I can use my zero product property. So I can say 0 equals x 
and zero equals x squared minus one. Now, solving for x, I get zero equals x, and x squared equals one. Take the root of both sides, x equals plus or minus one. Therefore, my zeros are x equals zero and x equals plus or minus one. For the final problem, again, I have factoring by grouping. So what I'm gonna have to do for here is group the first two terms and group the last two terms. Now see, what can I take out of my first two terms? Well, to factor out my first two terms, I can take out a four x squared. And that's gonna leave me with, actually, you know what? To make this look like that one, Wait, let's take out a negative 4x squared. Because if I take out a negative 4x squared, I'm going to be left with a negative x plus 6. And then here, I can't, um, actually, well, that will make sense. That'll work with that one. Well, yeah, let's just leave it like that. And then this will be times a negative x plus 6. So if I was going to, I'm sorry, plus so now, if I'm going to factor out a negative x plus 6, I'll be left with a negative x plus 6 times a negative 4x squared plus 1. Because remember, there's a 1 times that factor. So now, to solve each of these equal to 0, I have 0 equals negative x plus 6 and negative 4x squared plus 1 equals 0. So therefore, x equals 6 is 1, 0. And here, I need to subtract 1, divide by negative 4, and say x squared equals 1 fourth. Take the root. Oh, man. And I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth. All right, guys, that's how you uh, find the zeros of a polynomial uh, function. I hope this helped you out. Um, you know, just a couple tenements, just make sure you remember your rules are for solving. And just remember, whenever you're trying to find the zeros, just take your f of x equal to zero and find the values of x that make it zero. All right, thanks for watching.